Hello, I'm Eddie Leonard, a biologist with the Coastal Resource Division of the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. And I'm BJ Hilton, and I'm also a biologist here at Coastal Resources Division. Today we're going to be taking a look at our touch tanks. Uh, we've um, collected some different species from inshore waters here in Georgia from a few, di from a few different assessments, and uh, we're going to go over a few of those today. Okay, so let's dive right in here. Um, the, the assessments that we use uh, to collect these animals are, um, there's a variety of them. One of them, the one that BJ and I work on, is called the uh, Ecological Monitoring Trawl Survey. But we're primarily focused on the uh, assessment of populations of shrimp and crabs in coastal Georgia. This is a white shrimp. Uh, this is one of the species that's harvested commercially in the state of Georgia. Uh, we also have uh, brown shrimp and to a very limited degree pink shrimp in our harvest, but everything here today is, is white shrimp. This time of year, white shrimp are the only ones that are really around. Uh, they grow uh, about an inch a month throughout the year, throughout the summer. They're, they're hatched in the spring. They move up into the estuaries. They grow about an inch a month and uh, they make their way back out towards the open ocean. And then at the end of about a year's time, they'll spawn again in near shore waters and then the process starts over again and, it, and uh, we monitor their populations in order to um, open, uh, uh, provide the information that, that informs the opening and closing of the commercial harvest season. That's one of our critters here. Um, while we're in, it, it, doing that survey we encounter a lot of other fish that we call bycatch that are things that we're not actually targeting but we still make an account of them and measure and weigh them. This is an Atlantic croaker. Uh, this is one of our m most common species. These actually will get large enough that folks will target them um, recreationally fishing. Here's one here. And he's a little bit bigger, so he's a little harder to handle. But uh, you can get a look at him. Maybe DJ can handle him better than I did. Uh, but that's, that's around the size that people might start harvesting them. Um, you catch them with peeled shrimp. Any, pretty much any dead bait inshore, you can catch those little guys. Um, another interesting species that we encounter a lot of that people seem to be very interested in is the Atlantic stingray. This is an Atlantic stingray. Um, and I'm handling this one. We handle them pretty regularly, so we, we kind of know how to handle them, but these also have had the barbs removed from their tails. They this actually, is a male. They actually do have a barbs uh, on their tail, at the base of their tail. BJ's going to show you there. that We've removed that barb so that they're not dangerous anymore. Uh, but they do still have some points and things that'll hurt you. It's best just to leave them be if you encounter them. Uh, but if you hand, if you do ha ever handle them, it just always handles from the front end. And, uh, but it's best not to handle them if you don't have to. These, very, very this, common. Oh, th th these, this is a male. You can see this is a male with the claspers on the bottom end there. The females don't have those. Um, but very, very common. Uh, very commonly seen swimming in the shallows uh, on mud flats and uh, below oyster banks. Um, and very commonly caught by recreational fishermen uh, as a bycatch also. There's not many people that target them, but uh, they are encountered as, uh, as bycatch most of the time. This is another critter, another fish that's um, commonly targeted. This is uh, known as a, a whoop. Folks call it a whiting. It's also known as a southern kingfish. The a big difference between a kingfish and a southern kingfish. Most of the time when folks yeah, talk about kingfish, they're talking about king mackerel. This is a southern kingfish, also known as a whiting. And these are very popular game fish. Uh, they'll get pretty large, um, much larger than this, and they're common in uh, surf fishermen catch them a lot, fishing from the beach. Um, and anglers catch them inshore as well in, in, from boats and from docks and bridges and things of that nature. Very popular uh, fish to eat. You see them a lot in grocery stores, uh, frozen and packaged, ready to eat. Um, so very, very popular fish to eat. Um, you want to talk about flounder? This is a southern flounder. Very, very common uh, game fish here in coastal Georgia. Um, very sought after from recreational fishermen. Um, as you can see, the eyes are on both sides of its uh, head. They lay on the bottom, just like that. And uh, they're an ambush predator. Um, so they blend in very well. Um, very popular fish here. 
Yeah, one interesting thing about these fish is that when they're when they're larval fish, their eyes are actually on opposite sides, and as they mature, one of their eyes grows through their skull to the other side, so that they end up like this with both eyes on the same side. Um, here's a, a cute little specimen of an Atlantic an angel. I'm sorry, an Atlantic spade fish. Folks, a lot of folks call them angel fish. They're not really angel fish, but. Um, I sort of misspoke there, but this, but this is a, a Atlantic spade fish. They'll get very, very large. They'll get, you know, that big, and, and they're almost as tall as they are long. And they can put up a really good fight on light tackle, but that's just a, a little tiny juvenile. Um, and uh, BJ's got another very common game fish there. So if I can hold them, they will, uh, they have very, very sharp spines and can really hurt you. Um, let's see if I can get him to calm down. Um, this, this is no, let me see if I can get him to calm down. <laughs> this is a sheep's head. There we go. I got him good enough. This is a sheep's head. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Very feisty. Uh, they fight very good on the online too. Um, as you can see, along the top there, very sharp spines <laughs> and I don't know if you can get in his mouth. These fish feed on barnacles which are located on uh, pilings and docks and bridges and everything like that so they have teeth like a, uh, a sheep or a human and uh, they crunch barnacles. Uh, that's their main forage. Very popular fish to eat, uh, popular game fish, very, very popular here in coastal Georgia. They actually have sharp incisors or, or teeth in the front of their mouth, which is kind of rare. That's what they nip with. BJ was talking about them breaking the barnacles off of things. That's how they do it, these front teeth. And then they have crushers uh, in, the, in, in the roof of, in the bottom of their mouth, inside, that uh, crush the barnacles off. Pretty impressive mouthful of teeth. This is a, a kind of a, a, a fish that's related to a, a, a sheep's head and a pinfish. This is a pigfish, and uh, they'll actually, we spoke about a croaker a little while ago, and when you actually handle a croaker, a lot of times you'll hear them croak or grunt. These pigfish will, will do that even to more of an extreme. They actually grunt, and it sounds very much like a, a pig grunting. So uh, that's where they get the name pigfish. Uh, but Kind of interesting fish. We don't catch a lot of these around here, but uh, so this is a really good specimen of that. Actually, they're much, they're pretty colorful in person, especially when they're um, when they're not as agitated as that guy is now. Here's another species. Um, a lot of people, when they encounter these or see these, they, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, a blowfish. And although they do resemble and, and look like a blowfish or a northern puffer a lot, um, it's, this is actually called a striped burfish. And it's, long, it's the one species that has these really big spines on the outside. Um, really, really neat and cool looking fish, um, but commonly misidentified here in Georgia. The puffer actually doesn't have as dramatic of spines. These burfish have very dramatic spines, and a puffer has sort of a rough spiny skin, but it's not nearly as pronounced as that. Um, speaking of spines and, and, and dangerous critters, this is a, a very interesting invertebrate called a mantis shrimp. And I'm going to try to handle it. He's very lively. I'm going to try to handle him without getting myself injured here. But his fore, his fore end, his hand, his, his, his fore limbs, almost, almost like hands, uh, are shaped just like a, man, a praying mantis. So they, they launch out like a praying mantis is in, to grasp food items or slice at food items. The real dangerous part of him though is this back end. Oh, see he's, he's throwing his forearms out now trying to slash it. The really dangerous part is this back end, which is the tail end. This is where they get the name thumb splitter. Uh, they'll, they'll turn their body in upwards like this and then they'll thrust that tail forward and jab that very 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 sharp uh, jagged tail into you and, and they can really cause some pretty bad cuts. 
So normally we wouldn't have these in a touch tank, but since we're doing this virtually, we thought it'd be nice to show them to you. Tongue fish. Oh yeah. See if I can get a hold of this one. These, these are really hard to hang, hang on to. Yes. I'll try to hang on to them, see if I can get a good look if he'll calm down. <laughs> They're slippery. Let's see here. One of the hardest fish to hang on to in here. <laughs> I finally got it. Okay, this is uh, called a tongue fish, and uh, I'm sure you can see right away why uh, why they're called that. Um, they're shaped, shaped just like a tongue. Um, not a lot of people know about this species. Oops, I'm about to lose it. Uh, mainly, we catch this species in our ecological monitoring trawl survey. Uh, dragging on the bottom, which is where they live, just like a, a flounder would. Um, they don't get a whole lot bigger than this, but just a, a neat neat species that not a lot of people uh, get to see. Very There's often. another another similar fish that, that, that uh, looks somewhat like a flounder. You can see he's pale white on one side, and they, they live on the bottom like this too. The first thing you might notice other than the size and kind of the shape of the head between this and the flounder we showed you earlier is that these have their eyes on the right side of their body, and the flounder have their eyes on the left side of their body. So these would be called a right eye, and that would be called a left eye fish. But uh, this is called a hog choker, and uh, there's several legends of how they got their names. Um, but essentially, when they latch on, they, they, they're, they're really good at forming sort of a suction on, on either on your hand or on on the substrate or whatever. If you brush your hand across them this way, they're really smooth, but if you pull your hand back this way, they're really, really rough. Legend has it that uh, farmers used to feed food scraps to their pigs in the, you know, uh, bycatch fish that they didn't want to, to, to eat themselves. And that uh, if the hogs ate the, the hog choker backwards, that it would choke the hog. And I, now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, it makes it so. That's a hog choker. Really, really common. You, these are found everywhere from almost pure seawater to almost pure freshwater. So you can find them all throughout the estuary. And that's true of a lot of these fish here. People think of some of these fish as being either saltwater or freshwater. And they, they are generally more associated with saltwater, but a lot of them will venture very, very far up into fresh, fresher water. Brackish water is some of the call it. Another species here, um, obviously you can see right away, uh, it's a species of stingray. Uh, this is called a smooth butterfly ray. They're silky smooth on, on, on the top. Um, very, very neat uh, species. The one main difference is you can see versus the Atlantic stingray that we talked about earlier is a much shorter tail here. A uh, much shorter tail and there's no barb on these. Um, they're bar barbless species, but just a neat, neat species we encounter here. Yeah, the stingray, the, the, the Atlantic stingrays, we removed their barb, the dangerous part of them, but the, the smooth butterfly ray, they never have a barb, so they, they don't grow a barb that can penetrate your skin, so a uh, big difference between those two. They're completely harmless. If you should catch one fishing, then you don't have to worry about it. As long as you're sure you know what it is, then um, there's nothing to worry about. And we've got another uh, flatfish species also. This would be the fourth one. Um, very, very similar to the flounder and tongue fish and hog choker that we've already gone over. And this is called a fringe flounder. Just another flatfish bottom species, as you can see. Both eyes on the same side. Um, don't get a whole lot bigger than this. That's, that's, that's it, besides blue crab. Oh, blue crabs. So I mentioned a moment ago that uh, our ecological monitor and trawl survey, we're looking at shrimp and crab populations primarily, and the crab population that we're most focused on is the blue crab, uh, which is the, uh, the most heavily harvested uh, 
commercially harvested and recreationally harvested species of crab in coastal Georgia. This is a male crab, or, or what some folks would call a jimmy crab. They have much larger claws than the female. And their, their apron, this little flap on their belly is known as an apron. And you can see this one is shaped kind of like the Eiffel Tower, kind of point, straight, skinny, and pointy. The females will have one that's shaped like a Capitol building, so it's a large flap along the bottom. It's the easiest way to tell a male from a female. And the female uses that expanded apron to actually carry her eggs in the form of a, a, a ball of eggs that resembles a sponge, which is the reason why they call them sponge crabs. Um, BJ's holding this crab about one of the only ways you can hold it without being grabbed by the, by the claws, and that is to hold it by the swimmerette legs on the back. Um, uh, this is a species of swimming crab. Uh, it's not only bottom dwelling. They can swim a great distance in the water column. And they do that by propelling themselves along with those flat legs, those flat and swimmerette legs. They whisk, uh, walk them back and forth in the water and it will suspend them on the, on the tides and they can move a great distance that way. But if you're eating, a, if you're in coastal Georgia or in, in, in eating a crab cake or crab cake sandwich or something of that nature, more than likely you're eating blue crab. So that's, that's the species you're probably getting. If you're getting crab legs, those are not from coastal Georgia at all. Those are from uh, northern waters in Alaska and places like that, known as snow crab or paleo crab. But these are our local crabs. We do have some stone crabs in Georgia, but they're not nearly as plentiful as they are some other places like Florida. Um, so this is our main, our, our main crab crop in Georgia. Well, thanks for joining us here today at our Touch Tank, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we hope to see you next year at Coast Fest 2021 in person. Hey, thanks, Eddie and BJ, for that terrific tour around the Touch Tank. You guys have a great job. Hey, now it's time to go dry off, so go find a towel and, and, and dry off. Well guys, that's it for Virtual Coast Fest 2020. We thank you so much for attending. We hope you've caught all nine episodes. If you didn't, you can go back and watch them all at coastalgadnr.org slash coastfest. Speaking of which, if you like the t-shirt, you can find, you can order one at that same website in your size and have it delivered right to home. Uh, a couple of other announcements, Coast Fest Art, don't forget, it's going to be at the Brunswick Library from Monday the 6th through the 13th. So check out the Coast Fest art at the Brunswick Library in downtown Brunswick. And finally, where are you going to be October 2nd, 2021? I hope you're going to be at the 27th Annual Coast Fest live and in person. Thanks, guys. See you next year.